In the last video, we were looking at how to solve quadratics, and one way to do it that always works is to use the quadratic equation. So we looked at that, and this is the general form of a quadratic, and this is what's often called the quadratic equation. I find it a bit uh, difficult to call it quadratic equation because this is an equation that's a quadratic, but what this this thing that's normally known as a quadratic equation, what that does, it tells you what the zeros or roots or x-intercepts are of a quadratic. In other words, this tells you the solutions. So if you know what a and b and c are, you can just plug them into this maybe gross looking equation, but you can actually do it. You just figure it out. Now we looked at uh, what this little thing right here can be, and that's called a discriminant, and we looked at different solutions. But what I want to do now, though, is just give you a practical example here. So let's find the roots of this following. I think the first step is just to write down what a is. a is negative 1. By the way, these aren't always written in a nice order. Maybe they're backwards. So you got to remember that don't just look for the first thing that shows up. The a is the term in front of x squared, so that's a negative 1. The b term is the one in front of the x, so that's a negative 2. And c is just 1. So then I can use the quadratic equation, which if you remember it, is x is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that, over 2a. So I'm going to write that down, because it's useful to write it. The more times you write it, you may end up even having this memorized. I'm not sure if your teacher wants you to memorize this, I personally think it's a bit of a waste of time to memorize it, because you can normally just look this up if you need to. I've experienced this in physics many, many times when I'm trying to solve a physics situation, and all of a sudden end up with a quadratic of some kind, and then I just look up what this is, and away I go. The good news is, because I'm a teacher, I've used this so often that this has just made its way into my brain, whether I wanted to or not. This one sits very well in my brain here. So x is going to be this, if I want to find the roots. Because remember, I'm trying to make y equal to 0, right? I'm trying to make that 0 equals blah, 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 blah. So how do I do that? I can just start plugging in numbers. So x equals well, minus b. Well, b is negative 2, so minus negative 2 is just going to be positive 2. Plus or minus square root of, well, what's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. I'm going to do 4 times now, this is negative 1, this is 1, all that over 2 times negative 1. Uh, here, I should actually be careful, just because I was, I was actually uh, saving some steps here, but here I wrote down all the details, but I hope you see what to do here. I can then say 2 plus or minus square root of, well, this is 4, minus, now I need to do 4 times negative 1 times 1. Well, 1 times negative 1 gives me negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 4 gives me positive 4. So that kind of works out nicely. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I've got this answer so far. Now I can keep going then and say, well, x equals then 2 plus or minus square root of, and what's 4 plus 4? That's 8. I suppose I don't need such a long square root here. All that divided by negative 2. Now the fact that the discriminant here is positive, which is what we were looking at before, that means I have two answers, right? I have 2 plus square root of 8 divided by negative 2, and I have 2 minus square root of 8 divided by negative 2. Now I could actually try to do that on a calculator. So I can actually get out my calculator. Where is it? There it is. Maybe I'd better clear the key history here, and I'll just go back and quit and clear. There we go. So what I'd like to do is actually figure this out. So I want, uh, maybe just to write this out clearer, I want to try to find then what is x equals 2 plus the square root of 8 divided by 2. That's one answer. And I have x equals 2 minus the square root of 8 over 2. Those, those are my two answers. I'm going to get something here. I'm going to get something approximately equal to something. I'm going to have x equals approximately equal to something here. I need my calculator's help if I want to get a decimal answer for it. So what I'm going to do is just put my calculator over here, maybe hide this a little bit. There we go. So I want, I want to do 2 plus the square root of 8 and divide that whole thing by 2. So I can do that. I can say that right here, actually. If I want to use my new uh, calculator format, I can do it nicely. Whoops. 
I can do it here like this. So I want a fraction. I want to say 2 plus the square root of 8, all that divided by 2. Enter. And I get roughly 2.414, approximately. Right, it's not exactly this. Uh, wait a second, I did something wrong, didn't I? Um, if you're really paying attention, you might notice something that... Try to find... Can you find it? I made a mistake somewhere. Try to see if you can find it. I found it. Um, obviously not before I wrote it, but do you notice this was a negative 2? Why then did it become a positive 2? Shouldn't have. It should have been a negative. So if I look at that then, I should have done... Uh, so maybe I'll do the uh, last entry, which is second and enter. That's this little blue entry. But instead of doing that, I want to do down here, I'm going to scroll back, I think, and try to scroll in front of the negative and just go negative two here. There we go. Enter. There. So my answer is negative 2.414 approximately. It's not exactly, right? It's exactly something else, but it's approximately uh, negative 2.414. That's one of my answers. My other answer is going to be, well, I just have to calculate that. So this time I'm going to save time. I'm going to use the same entry, except this time I'm just going to go back and change this. I don't know if this is actually faster. I probably could have typed this out at the same time, but here I want to make this a minus instead. And that's my other answer. Let's see what happens. So I get 0 0.414 approximately. Right, so approximately 0 0.414. So those are my two answers thereabouts. Now, of course, what you could do, you could actually um, you know, try to work on the square root and make it look a little bit nicer if you wanted the exact answer. It turns out that's the same thing as uh, something else. You can actually say, um, yeah, you can always work with square roots. But in this case, this suffices just to show the example. We can get a decimal. But that means that this is an example of something that works. This will work any case. So using this quadratic equation works for all situations. Now you might think, well, why didn't I just try to factor this one? Well, it turns out this one doesn't factor. Uh, so I can't find two numbers that actually, uh, that actually give a product or sum of what I need it to be. Um, just in case you want to see what I would have to do here. Here I would actually have to, first of all, take out a negative one here. So I would have actually plus this and I'd have it like this. So if I wanted to factor this, I'd have to be factoring negative x squared plus 2x minus 1, which looks like this except I've flipped all the signs. So if I wanted to try to factor this, I'd find two numbers whose product was a times c. If you remember how to factor, that would be 1 times negative 1, so that'd be negative 1. And I'd want the sum to be b, which is just 2. So I have to find two numbers who multiply to negative 1 that add up to 2. Well, the only product, the only two numbers that multiply to negative 1 is 1 and negative 1. Whoops. So in other words, negative 1 and plus 1. Now, if I add those together, though, I don't get 2. I get 0. That means there does not exist two numbers whose product is negative 1, whose sum is 2. That's why this does not factor. So factoring does not help you here. I'm actually going to delete this here. Um, so that's why we use the quadratic equation. You can always try to see if it factors. But if it doesn't factor, then quadratic equation is your friend. Well, you can do this. So we can do this for other examples as well. So in the following video, I'm going to show you uh, another one.